I can see it, yeah. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, thanks for inviting me to give this talk. So I'm going to be talking about uh, serpentinization now at risk at margins. And in particular, I will be focusing on how new modeling strategies help us understand the relationship between the formation during rifting, serpentinization, detachment, and asymmetry formation. And this is a collaborative work uh, between several co-authors in particular, Song Lang Liu, who um, is a postdoc in our group. So, um, uh, Serpentin, uh, in the last 25 years, there has been intensive focus in the study of serpentinization processes. This is because um, serpentinization has a series of wide ranging geodynamical, biological, geological, and economical importance. And at, uh, at rifted margins, um, serpentinization has been mainly studied in the ancient uh, margins, now of course in the Alps and in the West Siberian Newfoundland margins, where several multi-channel wide angle seismic surveys and four drilling transects have taken place. And uh, from this, uh, we interpret that the continent ocean transition is made of exhumed and serpentinized mantle over 50 to 200 kilometers wide zone with uh, possibly uh, gaboroic intrusions with increase in volume ocean world. And uh, as Mathilde shown, uh, has shown, the velocity structure in this continent ocean transition is recognized because it doesn't show a step velocity increase at the moho, and similar velocity structures have been observed in other margins, which have been interpreted to have a similar uh, continent ocean transition. And in the last uh, 15 to 20 years, it has been suggested that actually this process is much more widespread than we thought, but uh, recent uh, drilling in the South China Sea, which found a magmatic uh, crust just close to the thin continental crust has put, has questioned this interpretation. So I'm gonna focus on the West Siberia Newfoundland uh, margin. This shows the uh, two margins at the time of breakup. And here below, I show you line IAM 11 that shows how the, con that the continental crust thins from around 18 kilometers to break up through a series of faults, which in the distal margin detach onto a flat reflector, which we know as the S reflector, and ocean walls of it, we find the mantle exhumed at the seafloor. Um, wide angle data in this uh, region suggest that serpentinization already starts beneath this four to five kilometers uh, crust. And uh, in, in, in 2001, uh, we hypothesized that the main conduits um, for to bring water into the mantle to serpentinize it beneath the thin crust would be the brittle active faults. And we did some uh, simple thermal and rheological calculations to show that actually the crust could be entirely brittle, just landward of where we found the first serpentinization in the mantle and the, uh, and the occurrence of this as detachment. Uh, so uh, more recent 3D uh, wide angle data in the area of S uh, has uh, found that the maximum serpentinization is found at the intersections where the, at the places where the brittle falls intersect the S reflector, indicating that indeed falls were possibly the main conduits uh, for water to serpentinize the mantle, and uh, that the activity, the fault activity over the S-reflector became younger progressively oceanward, and that 
this uh, interpreted detachment uh, fault partly slipped at low angles, 20 to 25. So uh, Limer et al. interpreted that uh, this structure here is a brittle detachment, which is active partly at low angles. And in addition, they interpreted that this is the cause for the large scale asymmetry observed at the West Iberia Newfoundland margin. But if we look at the larger scale asymmetry, which is shown in, this, uh, in these two profiles of the West Area Newfoundland margin, and we compare it with the area of the S reflector, we see that this is much more restricted and that it cannot be responsible for the asymmetry that starts earlier. And in 2010, Thesser and I suggested that this asymmetry would be the result of an emergence of sequential faults that always uh, cut in the hanging wall of the previous fault, uh, causing um, to uh, resulting in two asymmetric margins. And uh, with uh, Sasha, we used dynamic models to analyze the conditions under which these uh, margins, asymmetric margins, were, would be formed. And uh, we found that in order for this lateral reef migration to occur, we needed our lower crust that was strong enough to localize the formation in only one fold, but weak enough to prevent crustal breakup by faulting. So um, on the one hand, we, we've seen that asymmetric margin formation requires a weak ductile lower crustal channel, even if uh, narrow. And on the other hand, we see that serpentinization already starts uh, beneath four to five kilometers thick and requires the uh, brittle falls to bring water into the mantle. So in this uh, uh, talk, I'm gonna show you a possible way to reconcile these uh, apparently contradictory statements taking into account that S is a composite structure that partially works at low angles. So uh, to do this, what we would ideally like is to have a dynamic model that reproduces the seismic data at fault block scale, but for several reasons, this is uh, uh, not possible. So we uh, designed a new uh, modeling a strategy, which is called that is uh, uh, published here in PEPI recently. And this is basically a normal dynamic model that has the typical components of a dynamic model, but um, in which we can introduce the interpreted history of faulting from the seismic data at selected steps during the model run. And so we can guide the dynamic model to simulate the data. Uh, and we impose faults in the upper crust by simulating them as weak planes. And it is important to note that we impose only the time and the initial angle at which faulting occurs, but the final fault shape, crustal and mantle thinning evolves dynamically with the model. And uh, finally, in the model I'm gonna show you next, we use a uh, wet quartzite, which is weaker than anorthite for the upper and lower crust, respectively. And uh, this is our target seismic line, which only shows the last stages of extension. So to simulate the first stages of extension, uh, we just run the model in a fully dynamic mode as usual. Uh, so here we see different uh, time steps during the model run. These bands show you how the upper crust is uh, deformed. In red, we have brittle strain rate. In blue here, we have ductile strain rate. And these arrows show you the direction of movement of the lower crust with respect to the upper crust. And the blue is the moho. So important point here is that the formation changes from distributed to localize in very in, in few folds which are large, and that the lower crust always flows into the footwall of the main penetrating folds. 
At this stage, we have seen, uh, we have reached a crustal thickness in the model, which is similar to the one we observed in our target seismic profile. And we start to impose the faults that we see in the seismic profile. And this is shown here. And again, the main point here is that the lower crust flows always towards the foot wall of the main active faults. And this results in that maximum crustal thinning occurs uh, underneath the overlying brittle faults. And if we look at the evolution of, of fault F3. In the tail, we see the following. So this is the fault evolving at different time steps. So here we have in red brittle deformation, blue is ductile, and we have three markers and two isotherms that are used to see how the upper and lower crust uh, or the foot wall and hanging wall are cooling or heating relatively. And so what we see is that with increasing the slip, the fault rotates, and with extreme extension, the brittle deformation deforma uh, bifurcates at depth into a brittle part, which is located at the foot wall and in the strong anorthite lower crust. The foot wall in this case, well, in all cases, the foot wall is cooling. So this C was at a bit more than 375 degrees, and now, it's uh, colder than that temperature. And this brittle deformation reaches the mantle where the crust is thinner. And the mantle at this location is also, uh, uh, the area here beneath the moho is also where the mantle is cooler. So in the foot wall, uh, brittle deformation allows the penetration of fluids into the mantle and the serpentinization of the mantle at the inter intersection of the brittle folds with uh, the moho. Uh, Marta, you have 12 minutes. Okay, in the, in the foot wall instead, the, the, uh, in the hanging wall instead, uh, the, the, the crust hits. Uh, so C was at 375 and now it's a bit less of 500. And this leads to the propagation of this deformation into a narrow shear zone that connects with the uh, mantle, with the lower crust and mantle farther oceanward. And, um, and this uh, ductal shear zone um, is at its last stages, active at low angle at 25 uh, degrees. The upper part is at 44 degrees. And these are the same angles that were predict, interpret from the 3D data cube. And as extension on goes and new faults form in the hanging wall, these uh, faults back rotates and, uh, and as we see now, uh, form a, a sub-horizontal uh, uh, slip zone uh, and uh, two asymmetric uh, margins. Um, uh, we, uh, which are shown uh, on the exhumation of the mantle in between them. And here is the model shown after 115 million years of evolution. These are the main horizons of the model on top of the seismics. And we see that the uh, detachment, the, the S reflector coincides where the places where these brittle folds propagate at depth as ductile shear zones and that the maximum serpentinization is uh, at the intersection between these upper brittle folds and the, or is beneath the intersection of these brittle uh, upper folds and the S reflector below. So uh, to summarize, we show that the formation mechanisms change laterally across active folds during extreme extension and that the crust is not completely brittle before detachment formation at magma pool margins and progressive cooling in the foot walls uh, um, leads uh, to maximum serpentinization where brittle falls appear to intersect S and in the foot hanging walls instead, the deepest upper crustal and lower crustal levels become progressively hotter and more ductile leading to detachment formation and a slip at low angle. 
And thus we interpret that S is a composite structure that sleep at low angles in the ductile field. And because th these uh, results give us a very uh, high resolution thermal field during extension, this provides us a quantitative uh, framework to study hydrothermal systems related to serpentinization, their hyd associated hydrogen and methane production, and the consequences for uh, chemiosynthetic life. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Marty. Excellent in time. Um, it's a very interesting presentation uh, with a lot of new things. Um, I see that there is a question by Matilda. Can you open the microphone and ask your question? Yeah, Mar Marta, I was uh, I was wondering about this uh, this high strain you have all, all along the Moro, all through the model. It's most visible in in slide thirteen. So so, and I was wondering whether it meant that that you had serpentinization. Uh, no, yeah, slide thirteen. Yeah. Well, it's it's the same here, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is this is producing serpentinization. No, no, but I mean, I mean, deep, deep in the at the base of the crust. If you go back yeah. to slide thirteen, that's the one I, I was thinking of. Okay, might be the same thing, but uh, yeah, yeah, this one, thirteen, but. 14 or 13. which one? 13. 13. Okay, this one. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, that's that's where I think that serpentinization starts. But 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 you extend it all the way uh, along the moho. Uh, what along do you mean? The like mod model. What uh, you mean in the in the last picture? In the last picture here. No, I, I mean, I mean the the base the base of your crust all along your model is blue. Yeah, it's it's blue. Yeah, and serpentinization is occurring here. I'm sorry. So that's the base of the of the lower crust. Yeah, but if you if you go to, for example to the next slide, that's the thing I don't understand. Okay, so now you go to ex to the left of your model at uh, a depth of twenty kilometers beneath the thick uh, continental yeah. crust. Yeah. At, at uh, no, at at uh, fifty five or something like that in your in your distance scale. Okay, so you've got some deformation that's localized at the base of the crust there also. Here. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Um... Well, here, here, what we have is that there is this is the lower crust is flowing, is flowing in this direction. Oh, okay, so so the strain softening is due to the rheology of the lower crust. It's not yeah. it's at the upper matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it's it's really very interesting. It's it would be nice to compare with uh, with some of the outcrops in the Pyrenees. So I see that there is a question by Yong Ling. Uh, can you open the microphone and ask your question? Young Lee? Um, okay, so so um, the question is about what is the maximum depth of separatization? Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I mean, uh, I, I haven't... Uh, I, we haven't checked really here. Um, I mean, one, one thing, the, so for example, if you look at here, this is F3, this is the first fold uh, underneath which serpentinization would occur. That's uh, five, uh, 500 degrees and uh, the vertical distance. So that's 10 kilometers. That's very little, but then, but, but then this, this goes up. And you may think that some uh, some deformation is uh, still going up, and so uh, on, and so the deformation, the serpentinization front goes deeper. Also, these models don't have hydrothermal cooling. Uh, you might uh, expect that once you put hydrothermal cooling, this goes a little bit deeper. There is an interesting question that is related to this because um, so uh, often we talk about separation if it's exhumed 
So the, the, the question is in the South China Sea where you get very thin crust, can you think that you get separation underneath the, the outer part of the thin crust or even underneath uh, basalts that are still- I, I used to think you can't, but now I think you may. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> but this is not shown here in these models. Yeah, because it would- Yeah, no, I used to think, I used to think, uh, I used to think that if you had magma at the surface, you cannot have serpentinization at depth, uh, but I'm not that sure of that anymore. Um, I've been sure of that for 10 years, <laughs> but now I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not that sure anymore, but this is, this is not shown here. We're doing uh, other fully dynamic models that have more components and in a way show that a little bit. So I do wonder how are the continent ocean transitions of margins. What I, what I see from the models is that in places like the South China Sea, while the crust is thinning, I get magmatism. But mm. once the crust uh, has thinned, I, I may get a mixture. Okay, so, so a very short last question from uh, Suzanne and a short answer because we need to go ahead after. Yeah. So Suzanne, can you ask? Hi, Marta. Um, I, I love the detail that you achieve in your numerical models. Um, so my, my question is, do you, I, I know you, you work from the in-sequence faulting model, but do you ever see out-of-sequence faulting? Yes. So does the early circumstances yes. yes. help us make a jump? This is, this is the out-of-sequence. That is what is going to become the out-of-sequence. So it's only a very small jump then, no? No, but what happens is that you always, you have the main fault here and you always, and you have a conjugate in the foot wall. And, uh, and during a symmetric extension, this is, this is, uh, this is uh, the main dominant fault. But at some point, cooling of this part uh, leads to localization in the foot wall of the main fault that, of the main uh, foot wall of the, one of the main faults, you know, that one of the sequential faults. And then, and then that's the out of sequence. And, and you see it very well here because for example, this is the dynamic model. So here we allowed the dynamic model to evolve to break up. And this breaks this, this last, this, this fault F7 we interpreted to be this one and, and it breaks it. So the fault F7 was here. It breaks, it breaks this, this block and leaves part of this fault on the Newfoundland basin and part of it on the West Iberia. And we had seen this and this is, it jumps backwards. and. And if you go fully dynamic, um, yeah. you see this also. Okay, very, very interesting. Um, uh, if you yeah, have to go in the chat, and now we go to Paula. 